Early in the 160s BC, it became clear that any power who stood up to the Armenian coalition was in for a very difficult time. Pergamon was forced to its knees by a disastrous preemptive strike, and other smaller kingdoms simply surrendered the moment word of Armenian mobilization reached them. There was a stumble when rumour had it that King Esarhaddon had died, but it was quickly confirmed that he was still visiting court and leading troops, despite an apparent change in his policies. This Esarhaddon was fighting Bactria and the Seleucids in the east, achieving success even more quickly than expected. You are King Esarhaddon. I didn't expect to see you. Whereas I predicted your arrival perfectly. A mere diplomat would not be sufficient to discuss matters as lofty as your surrender. I've said nothing at all, and you dare suggest that is my intention. As expected of the chosen heir of the Wolf Artaxius. I fear my journey here has already been wasted. Ah, as you wish. Then allow me to help you return. Perhaps a thousand white horses. What are you proposing? Not enough. I shall deliver to you a fleet of ships from Antiochia, moved over land in a great convoy under the King's banner. A gift for the newest member of the coalition, with the greatest legacy of all. You can change the sea into wine for all I care. You've made the point I needed to hear. I shall see you in battle. Wait, friend, noble king, emperor, even. I was merely offering the diplomatic niceties that the old Esarhaddon had prepared. I am a new man, willing to see eye to eye with other great men. Is that so? Without a doubt. And I have no doubt that once I summon my friends, and you hear what they have to say, you will join my coalition willingly. What friends are those, you mad old dog? The founders of the Pandoran League. You shall count among them. Bring out the box. Welcome back to Wings of Eden. With the surrender of the Seleucid Empire, we've pretty much got the victory conditions, at least the territory portion. The only thing we don't have is 55 total regions under our control, and now we do. I bought what remains of the Ptolemaic Kingdom over on Cyprus, so we now actually have not only the territory conditions for the military victory, the next one, but the divine victory, the ultimate victory that's only for hardcore players. So that's pretty good. We've got all the territory we need in the coalition to complete the game. We've just done it way too early, so the other victory conditions, like Research 20 Things, are still very far from being completed. I'm going to play on a little bit further now, in a let's see what happens sort of vein. My current mission is to continue the war with the Bactrians. I sent Manakapi to start that. I was going to send Mithridates to get involved as well, but he's run out of supplies and I'm still not completely sure how you get them back. The current leading theory is just stand around. That seems to gradually regenerate your supplies, but other armies seem to never run out of supplies even while moving around, so I'm not quite sure. It might be that winning battles also restores your supplies because Manuakapi has never gone around away from fully supplied, but then again he keeps fighting and winning battles. We're here a couple of turns later actually, after I besieged a town that the Bactrians took and then took it back myself, losing a couple of units there in the auto resolve. The auto resolves being very realistic, since in a siege assault you probably would lose a couple of units while the rest of the army will be okay. So whoever sorted that out in the mod seems to have done a good job, although it's annoying me here since I'm going to have to re-recruit something. I'm going to give this town over to the Seleucids, that'll make their borders look a bit neater as well. And they're now a nice eastern buffer state, the whole east of the map, what of it there is, is now going to be on the other side of the Seleucid Empire. 
I'm also going to start a little project over here in the west. There's nothing going on in Anatolia, so the army, army I had there guarding it might as well just walk off and do something else. I'm going to move it over to fight with the Illyrians who we're at war with through the Byzantines, I think, just to see what happens and give us some access potentially to the Roman Empire. You can see we've also gained a new puppet state over here for free, I didn't realise until now. These guys on the other side of the Caspian were puppeted to the Seleucids, so when we puppeted the Seleucids they ended up with us, so that was an especially good deal. However, there are more states that border us that aren't in the coalition. So, let's get some more. Here, there's a small Arabian kingdom that I can buy as a present for myself. It costs quite a lot of money, as you can see, to get these people to just suddenly surrender to you, since it does screw them over. But we've got absolutely loads. For every puppet state we get, our income rises, and our military costs aren't rising, neither is the administration cost or the corruption cost, which normally prevents you from getting money later in the game. So we're just really rich, we've got a massive income, and every couple of turns we can afford to throw 100k at some faction and right here you can see I'm buying Saba who control the rest of the Arabian Peninsula after spending all my money on that we now control everything down there we are expanding our territory very rapidly our income is going up and up since all of these regions are now paying us half of their income and we probably don't have to worry about them attacking us at least not without some sort of extreme circumstance very good stuff now, moving on, Mithridates has got some supplies after sitting around. He's gone from not supplied to barely supplied, so I thought I'd try moving him. I've got this other pet theory that standing on a road is another way to get your supplies to replenish, so we're going to do that with him right now. First, though, we've got more important business, because SR Haddon, no, Manu Ikapi, can reach the Bactrian main force that's hanging around in Seleucid territory. Stopping on the way to pick up some heavy cav to supplement our army, and then in we go. This battle's looking like a relatively easy one. It's two full stacks, but their troops are just a bit worse than mine. They do have some cataphracts, but we also have the same number of cataphracts to match, or more even, counting our general. So, I think we have the advantage in just about every category, just need to hammer this one home. You can't trust a Seleucid dog as far as you can throw them. And they some fat dogs, let me tell you. Every one of their officers looks like you're asking for damned ambrosia when you inquire about the grain shipments they promised. Pretty sure the mad old king gave them half the money in Armenia to get them on our side, but it ain't bought a smile that'll outlive a fly yet. Makes you wonder what exactly this whole coalition deal is gonna end up doing with itself. Whole point of it was that we were weak and needed to be strong all up together. Now, we're the big boys on the map. Not sure exactly what we're trying to protect ourselves from here. Pretty sure we already won and could just go home. But no, sir, here I am out in the unforgiven desert, eating this, what do you call this, mangy bread, whatever. Sure hope the king knows what's coming. Annoyingly, the replay for this battle didn't work, it just crashed the game the couple of times I tried to load it. So, here is the original version, the raw version. The fight started with the enemy having the superior position, but as they got close, they charged out, I guess not wanting to let me shoot them with my archers. Their cavalry came for the flanks, but that wasn't an enormous deal. Our main line are all spears, so if we're outflanked, turning around to deal with the cav isn't going to be hard. Plus on the left flank I've got these cataphracts which I can use to deal with the enemy's heavy cav, we'll just drive them away. Our two reserve units of cataphracts will jump in onto the right and that's going to sort everything out. Our archers are going to fall back behind the main line and just generally we're going for the classic line of spears, line of archers tactic where you don't have to do very much as the player and hopefully things will be fine. We'll focus on micromanaging the cav. On the left, we've already defeated one of the cav units. Manua Kapi will jump in to save our recently levied cav to help us out there, and then we'll be free to start sending them after the archers. The right side was cleared up pretty quickly as well, so our cataphracts will get to work there. On the left end of our melee line, the enemy haven't engaged us because they've done the classic blob tactic where most of their units attack your center, so we will be able to fold around. 
Chasing the enemy on our left was a bit difficult there because of the mountains. There was lots of bits of impassable terrain, so our cav were slowed down. There's also the consideration that the enemy have put stakes down. There are some anti-cavalry stakes behind their army, so if we chase the enemy without paying too much attention, we might get our cav killed. Luckily hasn't happened so far. The enemy's main infantry body is starting to rout, they're surrounded, they're being pounded by arrows and the fact that they blobbed up made that even more effective than usual. So just generally the melee is going to go in our favour. Going to pull back with my cav here and not spend too much time deep in the enemy's side of the map just in case we get staked and because we might actually get taken out by their one remaining heavy cav unit. As everything routed a few of the enemy's skirmishing units stayed on the battlefield because their general with those heavy cav was still there. That meant I needed to do a bit more work to finish things off. We make sure we've microed around the stakes and then send the infantry over the stakes to just get close to what remains of the enemy force. As we hit their general, he routes and that's going to allow everything else to leave as well, bringing us a victory. So that was relatively easy. Didn't actually expect that much of a challenge anyway, but the enemy really threw it away, blobbing up their infantry and charging their cav uphill into unwinnable battles. All good stuff. It's hard to see exactly how much of the enemy army we destroyed because the unit cards which normally turn red can't do it if there's already a coloured background there or no unit card as some of these units seem to have. But overall we did do a lot of damage and when you factor in the replenishment from take on warriors we pretty much didn't lose anything. We can take on the vast majority of our losses. After the normal replenishment in the end turn scene, we'll be back to almost full strength and that will have been a very cheeky trade indeed. The Bactrians are half dead and will now take attrition, I think we've sorted all that out. Mithridates is pretty much out of supplies again, I was still confused because we can see Manua Capi has full supplies and both of them have been away from home for a while, they've been on the march for a while, so it must have something to do with doing battles since Mithridates has been walking for ages without fighting. Going to leave them on the same spot for a bit to see if being close to each other does anything. I could just look up how the supply system works, but that's just not my style. I like to find things out the hard way or have the game tell me for no particular reason. I'm also moving in a new army up here along the south coast of the Caspian. You might remember I said I wanted to make a Roman style army and I've now got one, an army full of Armenian Romanized infantry, so we'll see how they do in battle if we can get into the Bactrian Empire. I also sent an army to check things out down here in Egypt, where it looks like things aren't going very well for Ter Shumu, the faction currently controlling what remains of the Ptolemaic Kingdom. And the problem is Carthage. They are the number one faction, and we're number two, and by the look of that balance bar, they're about twice as strong as us. Looks like we finally found ourselves a rival, and right now they're invading Egypt, so very soon they will border our coalition. Turns out they don't want to be my puppet state, that would be incredibly cheeky if we could just buy Carthage. <laughs> Maybe if I can get enough money it can be done. So yes, I decided that we might as well set up to have these guys as our rivals. Gonna send an army to go sit on this side of the Nile and watch over what happens here. Not declaring war or anything right now, I'm gonna see how things go and work out how to get involved in that conflict. We've also got the little war up in Illyria to focus on. Our army has now arrived at the front lines in western Greece, so I'll just besiege this random settlement. No army inside luckily, so it's just the garrison. We'll just see what happens there, set up the siege equipment and let things run their course. <laughs> My lord! Oh, didn't realise you were here. What's so funny? I was just thinking about the plight of our enemies. And who are our enemies? Anybody who isn't paying into our treasury. <laughs> Is that wise? my king yes it is anything else just seems like when you used to talk long ago it was more in line with what artaxius intended we ain't here to fight the world we're here to grow our people up without the world ruining everything i'd say we've already done that very nicely now we put our people to work i can't say i agree what? You wish to be a pretender to the throne? You are a prince of Armenia, that much is true. But I am the chosen king, and I will remain as such long after you are gone. Your Majesty, what happened to you? 
back when everyone was saying you were dead. You ain't been the same since. I am not the same. I am better. You are not ready to learn the truth yet. It is only for me to know. What am I supposed to make of that? Whatever you want, for it matters not. I shall have a pressing assignment for you soon, so you'd best prepare for war. One of my bone runners will bring your orders. Over in Greece with our guy Arsuka, I thought we can probably just go ahead and take this town. I only need a couple of ladders to really get in because there's not that much stuff on the defensive. So I went down to give it a go, however things were much more difficult than expected because our ladders can't go on the walls for some reason. I think maybe they're too small or something. I wasn't allowed to tell the ladders to go to the walls. So that's going to be the end of that. I've only got ladders, so there's no other choice now. We can't actually get into the city other than by attacking the gate in melee, which is an option, but it's not a very good option. I realise that for some reason, my archers, perhaps standing on this small rise, are able to outrange the enemy archers on the wall, so we can achieve something in this battle. We can rain some arrows on top of their fortifications and weaken the garrison, which will help us out, because what we're going to have to do is go away, make a ram or something, and come back in a future turn to try the attack again. Going away is absolutely fine, we can just run to the edge of the map, the enemy will just sit on their wall and not pursue or anything. So I shot them with arrows for a while, and then we leave. The battle is declared a draw, and nothing happens basically, the siege will continue. We did actually take out a full unit of enemy archers with our attack, so that was good, and we damaged some other ones, lost some of our own men in the process, but barely any. As I said, this now means nothing happens with the siege situation, it just keeps going, and we can reopen the siege menu and get rid of those ladders off the construction queue, need a couple of rams by the looks of things. However, turns out we don't need those either. Reinforcements arrive from the north, and now a field battle will take place instead, including the garrison. We're pretty outnumbered here, but the balance bar still looks okay because our troop quality is better. Although the enemy have so many melee units, we are going to once again risk just being overwhelmed because we don't have enough infantry to keep our formation together. We'll have to see. And in fact, the battle started with a surprise. The garrison came on right behind where I deployed, so this fight's going to get started much faster than expected, but at least it means we can fight the garrison completely separately to the rest of the enemy army, which will help counteract our melee disadvantage. I turn around the left side of my army to receive the enemy. They're just trying to walk past me to go link up with their main force, so they walk right into the front of my shield wall, including these Greek hypaspists, perfect for taking on the enemy's lower quality spearmen. They do have the odd good unit in there, like these Illyrian nobles, a heavy infantry unit, but here you can see they've blobbed up on the end of our line in such a way that my jabs can sort of hit them from behind there. That's going to do lots of damage. At the same time, they've abandoned all of their missile infantry over by the line. They can't really escape because they're stuck against the edge of the map, so my cav just go in to start slaughtering all of them. After a while, that's all sorted, and we can form up to then charge into the back of the melee infantry. Some of their spearmen there actually turned around and came away from the fight to face us from the front. Some good AI. Not that it makes a difference in this case, because the charge is so heavy it just runs right through their spear unit and takes them out. Also, some of my own infantry are now folding around to completely envelop this group. Soon the entire group starts to rout, and now we're in business. We'll do a little bit of slaughtering here. But really, we need these men to ignore this situation now and form up. You can see on the mini-map the enemy's main army is starting to arrive. Their advanced cavalry and skirmishes are already here. I'm trying to escape with this unit that drove away some of their initial jav cav. We need to reform and get ready for the main battle. I really thought they were high enough. It would have taken so long to get more wood. I just... No one wants to make a siege tower after marching all this way. We should be on the walls right now. No matter. They're all dead now, and the chance to make that point the king wanted is right here. Kill all these Illyrians, make father and country proud, and go home. We'd rather do the rest tomorrow, but those idiots have come down off their hill and given us a chance to kill them right now. The king would be angry if I didn't fight them. Don't come home empty-handed, he says. 
more worried about being empty-bellied. And this whole thing about the backbone collection seems like a gruesome joke. Can't exactly say that they didn't have any, though, can I? I wonder what Armenia will end up returning to. Noise is building. Better actually do this, then. I deployed my spear line to intercept the oncoming enemy units, but on the right I for some reason decided to deploy a big line of archers on its own to initially hold off these Javkav, against which it is suited, however out there there are also some melee cavalry and they are going to cause us some trouble. They charge into the front of my horse archers to begin with, who I didn't realise weren't on skirmish mode, and immediately one unit is routed. That's not a good start. I need to bring over some spearmen to help out, but right now most of my infantry are busy. You can see we've managed to surround a group of enemy melee infantry and are doing a general surround and pound there, hoping we can slaughter them all. And there are also a few odd melees going on off to the left. Nothing too bad for us, we'll be overwhelmed eventually if these fights are left to their own devices since the enemy have numbers, but we're not being outflanked, which is good, and our men are quite good at holding their ground. Those enemy cav go on to rout one of our foot archer units before we really take control of this situation over here. I move over some out of ammunition skirmishers who are okay in melee to join the fight and that's going to help us out. Got some cataphracts in there as well, sorting business out. And now we can finally move some spears over to really resolve the situation. That melee that we had going on in a circle is over, everything is dead and we can get to reforming the line once again to continue the battle. Once one unit of spears is over here, we can drive those cav away, but the enemy had one unit of spears of their own that showed up. I'm going to try and move over these two units of javs that were hidden in the corner of the map from my initial plan to go and help out with those enemy spears so we can use our own spears against those cav. The fight's starting to probably take shape here. There's a big fight going on on the right, we're just setting something up in the center, and there's a smaller fight going on on the left. This left fight is being supported by our cataphracts who have just taken out one of the enemy's ranged cav units. I had another unit of cav trying to drive away the enemy's foot ranged units, but it failed. They actually got defeated as we tried to attack them. I think there was just too much weight of fire and they were too tired to do anything. And so we are going to have to fight while being shot by arrows, unfortunately. Those two jav units that came over to help on the right didn't do very well. One of them was immediately destroyed when the enemy's melee cav quit the engagement to go and just charge into them. Although they did kill a decent number of those melee cav in the process, and the survivors dove back into a fight with my spears, so that's what we like to see. They brought over some ranged cav as well though, and they routed my other javelin unit, so we didn't get to use those javelins in the end. My second unit of horse archers has ended up fighting with the enemy's jav cav and their melee cav, and while we have the disadvantage against both, we have the energy advantage in this situation, so our men just didn't die, and because the enemy units were on the verge of routing already, we were able to beat them. Back on the left, I'm using the cataphracts again to try and clear things out. I got this opportunity because those enemy warriors at the back quit the engagement for a while to just walk around doing nothing. So I quickly pop in here and take out the spear unit and now my spears can go on to fight that other unit and the cataphracts will just attack them as well. I've had one unit of spears break through the center to try and drive away all of those enemy slingers and archers and skirmishers just because they can do serious damage to us if left to fire at us for a long time. It does mean though we're effectively sacrificing that unit of spears because running one unit after a load of skirmishers is absolutely deadly, especially in Attila. Here we are again taking out the left flank with a cataphract charge. We can just keep doing this. The cataphracts are being rested in between charges so they're keeping their charge bonus high and there goes another unit as a result. Now we've got a free unit to go and help out in the center. Here's a quick look at the fate of that unit I sent out there to deal with these slingers and archers. The enemy hit them with a few javka from behind which slowed them down but I'm giving them constant orders to continue running after the slingers. If the slingers even get a couple of volleys off on our spearmen they could just all die so we need to keep them moving. But yes that unit was on the verge of routing as we just saw and it does route out there. 
the fight over on our far right has now been concluded, so all of those men come over to take part in the main engagement, and things are starting to look good as we surround the enemy's main group on the right. In the center, we're using our archers to take out the enemy's general and the surrounding noble warriors. The arrival of the men now freed up on the left hastens their demise. And finally, it looks like we've got this battle in the bag. Just need to finish off this surrounded group of enemies left over on the right or center right. They're already pretty surrounded. They're probably going to be pretty tired and you can see the route starting. Good time to route because they're about to be even more surrounded, but they can't quite escape since we are going to be completing the encirclement as they go and the cataphracts storm in there to take out those nobles. That just leaves a couple of units around the place, various skirmishing units and a few half-dead melee units that routed without engaging us. For some reason, these skirmishers did actually charge over to engage our formation, and they did well at charging through our pike phalanx. The phalanx was surprisingly ineffective. Immediately, the enemy are through the pike wall, but at least that fight didn't last very long. The enemy gave up, as they probably should have done even before engaging. Then these two units of slingers that I was chasing away earlier came back to the fight and for some reason didn't rout even after the rest of the army was gone. Eventually rested up my cab and went in for a charge and that's going to be the end of them. We end up with a close victory. We did take quite a beating across our whole army and a couple of units took an especially large beating but we didn't lose any full units which could theoretically translate to no losses over the long term and the enemy army was seriously wrecked. Some of the kills in our units were ridiculous. Our general, for example, had over a thousand kills on his unit from just doing cycle charges and chasing after routing units and there were hundreds on all of our main heavy infantry units. It all looked good. However, that said, this sort of didn't happen in the canon of the series. I say that because after this battle, as we progress to the next turn, I encountered a, a recurring glitch that I couldn't get rid of. Whenever the next turn started, the game would just crash, and I played the turn in several different ways, avoiding that battle we just saw and doing various things in attempts to find out what it was that was causing the crash at the start of the next turn. I was never able to find it, but I was able to go back to an old save six or seven turns back and then play roughly back to where we are using some hacks to make things easier for myself, but we're not going to be in exactly the same place that we are now, so I'll explain the slightly new timeline at the start of the next part. Thank you very much for watching then, and special thanks to all of the officially Devon patrons. As I said, we'll be moving into the parallel universe version of Wings of Eden in the next part.